Noah. Here. Peter. Yeah. I see Margo and Alex. Anike? That's not my name. That's not my name. That's not my name. They say who we are, where we've been, who named us, you know, what, what those names mean. Um, yeah. They say something about our culture, uh, our, you know, our, our history, our heritage. Our classrooms represent diverse languages and cultures. However, our teachers are often not prepared to take on the challenges presented by such classrooms. To address these challenges, we came up with strategies by which teachers could reach out to their students and make them feel included. Informed by Lily Wong Fillmore's article, What Teachers Need to Know About Language, we developed name learning strategies with the goal of creating learning communities that embrace different cultures and backgrounds. get to know each other. I pass out three by five cards to all the kids. I say on one side, write your name. And on the other side, write one thing that you don't think anybody knows about you. And then we put them all in a box and I'll sit up at the front of the class and I pick them out one by one and I read that thing and, they, and they, the class has a chance to guess who that is. One of the things I do is I get the class list before the school starts and I ask the teachers from the previous year how to pronounce the kids' names. Do my best to repeat it over and over again so that it comes off of my tongue naturally. Two truths and a lie. Um, and also something, uh, and then something something you don't know by just by looking at me. From the day one, identifying who the students are. The conocimiento activity is a way for teachers to get to know students on the very first day of school and also for students to get to know each other as well. The students go around answering questions on posters and afterwards they have to present that information and because of this we hear them say their name and also any nickname that they might have. The first one is learn to say your students names accurately. So, sixth grade, class B, sixth grade, class D, what I do is I just pull the stick whenever I need a volunteer, whenever I need to make groups, so I could say, Livia, you're going to be working with Claire today, and what I do is I set them aside so that throughout the class I know I call on every girl once. I've taken the power out of me so there's no bias. They get chosen by the popsicle sticks, and so it allows for very quick transitions, and it gives me a chance to learn their names while I look at them helps me to remember, oh, that's Claire. This name game can be used on the first day of class and be hung around the room like an art project. My name is Peter. I love pineapples. <laughs> Noah Boa. Anate is awesome. So another name learning strategy is creating your own classroom name dictionaries. So each student gets to create their own dictionary entries with their name. So they write their name and their um, phonetic pronunciation of their names. And then they tell us about where their name comes from, the meaning of their name, and maybe a personal history of their name. And that's a better way of creating a classroom community while memorizing names. This is just another variation of how I know my students name by putting them in a dance formation that when they come out of the formation, I get to call their names out and that's an easy way to remember them.
Teachers' attitudes affect students and their language values. Language is inherently political, and so are names. By mispronouncing names, teachers may inadvertently make students feel marginalized. Teachers need to be wary of their linguistic biases and consciously make an effort to show respect and appreciation for the cultural and linguistic differences of their students.